the reason why this app is, is I think a really special experience is because it's not, you know, just about, um, the technology, but it's about the people in the room. And I think there's an incredible group of people in this room tonight. And we have not, you know, just the opportunity to listen to good content, but we also have the opportunity to move around tables and meet people. And while you're looking around, if you just tap on one of the tables, then you'll teleport over there and you'll be able to hear the conversation that's happening just at that table. Um, so each table is private. Tonight's conversation tapping in is uh, going to be a thought provoking uh, and at times provocative um, uh, uh, conversation, audacious on some of the most important issues facing our continent, including the lack of access to clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. Our conversation is set amidst the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has only highlighted how vital the work that organizations like Face Africa undertake to ensure uh, water and sanitation programs are able to, to penetrate deeply in, in the most remote uh, regions in, across our continent. In 2021, we're gonna have to fight harder than we have ever fought before to ensure that the vital programs are able to reach vulnerable uh, families, vulnerable communities as fast as possible. We're joined by uh, Semhar Arya, who is the head of diaspora public policy for Facebook's Africa, Middle East, and Turkey, a public policy team. Thank you, Liz. So happy to be here. Hi, everyone. Our next guest is Sandra Makaria. Sandra has over 15 years of experience in strategic communications and advocacy. She is currently the Chief of Africa Section and Editor-in-Chief of Africa Renewal in the United Nations Department of Global Communications in New York. Please join me in welcoming Sandra. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Glad to be here. Our next guest is someone who many of you um, probably know, Saran Akaba Jones is the founder and CEO of Face Africa, a community development organization working to strengthen water and sanitation and hygiene infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa. A Liberian Ivorian national of Guinean descent, she splits her time between Liberia and Boston, Massachusetts. Please join me in welcoming Saran. Thank you so much, Liz. So happy to be here and welcome everyone. The COVID-19 um, pandemic has presented opportunities for the wash sector uh, because people are now starting to, to understand um, the importance of hygiene. And when we talk about wash at Face Africa, it's not just about providing clean drinking water. It's also about investing in hygiene education and making sure that communities and schools um, have proper sanitation facilities. And to, to, to your specific question about the role of social media and communications, I think for us, um, ultimately as a communications professional, and I think there are many in the room, your audience, it's all about your audience. Where is your audience? How do you reach them? How do you reach them in ways that they understand? Every, every African we know, every African you and I know is probably on Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp, and, and in many cases, all three. Um, you know, 2.9 billion people are using this app around the world. And we know that for the continent, uh, Facebook in many ways is uh, a, a direct line to the rest of the world where internet access may be a challenge, where connectivity issues persist, uh, and where you know the challenges of not having basic necessities, including clean water, uh, and in, in some cases, uh, food or access to education or shelter remain a problem. Uh, the advent of mobile phones and uh, the efforts that are being led by companies like ours and government in partnership with governments to make the internet accessible means that more and more uh, Africans of all ages are able to connect globally through their cell phone. I, I just wanted to add that, um, I mean, I, I think we, we can all agree that a persistent negative stereotypical image of the continent has, um, has, has 
it's, it's just stubbornly pervasive. Um, and for me, the idea, particularly of the African continental free trade area, is a story of hope. And so this dire um, narrative is going to die a death sooner rather than later, because we're going to have free movement um, of goods and people. Our economies are going to recover. It's going to be our stimulus. We've spoken at Africa Renewal, interviewed the Secretary General of the African Free Trade Area, uh, Wamkele Mene. Uh, he has a lot of work. We all have to support him in that work. But this is a transformative moment. This is I, I, I felt like I was in a masterclass today. <laughs> um, and it's been such a privilege um, to moderate um, such an insightful uh, conversation with such an accomplished group of women leaders. I'm super excited to, to be on this all-girl um, panel. And thank you all for your support of Face Africa over the years. Um, thank you for attending our events. Thank you for your words of encouragement. We're so grateful to all of you. Um, and if you're interested in, in supporting and in contributing, um, please feel free to text tapping in T A P P I N G I N to 44321. Yeah, I hope you had a wonderful evening and thank you all again so much.